Hello YouTube, today I'll be making an overview of the best Mac apps to have for the back to school season. So I've been a Mac user for several years now, so basically I have some experience on what are some good apps for school, as I'm in school myself. So just to start off would be the basics, pages, keynote, and numbers. So if you have been a Mac user before, they came out with these for free, you'd have to purchase them. However, right now, you can get them for free with any purchase of a Mac. This is iWork 09, I didn't upgrade to the newer version. So iWork is definitely a must-have, along with Microsoft Office. On the most part, compatibility is very good with Pages, Keynote, and Numbers, with their counterparts Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. However, it depends really on how complex your sheets will be. Sometimes there are minor formatting issues with each other. The next must-have app would probably be... Let's see, PowerShot. The advantage of PowerShot is when you're trying to send a picture to your friends, for example on Facebook or something, you can easily manipulate and take out all the important information. So let's say you have a Word document, you can easily point out all the important information that you want to write to them. Press press um, this, and then it saves it to your clipboard, or you can save the file onto your desktop. And after practicing this for several times, you can become very quick at it and quickly point out all the information that you need to know quickly and effectively and essentially in seconds you can take a screenshot and point out what's most important to you. Next up would probably be, let's look through my apps over here, Smarter. So the advantage of Smarter is that it essentially lets you make a series of flip notes. So here I tried to do something for my science exam. You can pretty much add different questions and answers. So let's say question what does SSD stand for? And then inside the answer here you can add the um, solid state drive. You can add the answer. And then once you click study, it goes into full screen. And then it'll ask you the question and then you respond with solid state drive, etc. So that is Smarter, which is a very cool app, and it's very useful. Another app would probably be To-Do List. So this will basically keep a bunch of to-do lists, and it will let you keep track of your progress. So this is something that floats over, and you can add additional to-dos, and it will float onto your desktop. And if you switch desktops, it will always remain on one single desktop. You can switch the position of these and then state once you're done, send them to the garbage and delete them completely off your list. So let's say um, one of them would be update github. Another to do would be um, contact bell for that's just whatever I have to do right now. Actually no, I'm going to take that out. So basically this just lets you do a to do. It's available on the Mac App Store. Most of these apps are available on the Mac App Store. Another very cool program that I haven't updated yet, but it's very useful, and there's a newer version for Yosemite, would be self-control. Now, I'm not sure if I have it. Anyways, self-control is very self-explanatory. It essentially allows you to block certain websites. I have a video on my channel. It blocks certain websites so that you can visit them. It has the option to blacklist or whitelist websites. And that's a very neat application because the advantage is that you can focus solely on one website if you want to, for example, Wikipedia, or you can block Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, whatever you use for that matter. Another cool must-have app would probably be um, Code Runner. So essentially, Code Runner lets you run code in different languages. For example, here we have C, C Sharp, C++, Java, J JavaScript, Lua, Objective-C, Perl, Python, PHP, Ruby, Shell Script. You can essentially just pick one, start coding, do whatever you want to do. And you can pretty much have different tabs, and in the different tabs, you have different languages. So this is really quick because the advantage is that you essentially lose no time, it's very efficient, it's pretty much a very desirable 
piece of software for testing out short pieces of code for people who are going into software development. This app costs money on the Mac App Store. Another very interesting thing that I would find um, useful would probably be a rename a batch. So if you take screenshots of say a test for example, and I have a review of this on my channel, but essentially allows you to rename a bunch of files instantly. So let's say you have a bunch of screenshots like over here, we have a bunch of screenshots. We can open up a bunch of screenshots. And then we have and then it's a screenshot, right? We have screenshot options. So we can call it like temporary screenshot. We can have a suffix, we can have a starting number and then the number of padding. And then we can click rename. And then the original files will be deleted and then they'll be replaced by these. So we can see here we instantly rename these. So it starts off at one, goes to two, three, and four. So this is a very neat way of quickly changing files. And I especially use this whenever I, t I get screenshots from other people. For example, with assignments, you can, and it doesn't want to, okay. You can quickly rename everything and it just becomes more efficient. Another must have app looking through my files. You can use a separate note taking app. For example, there is Evernote, there is um, Google Keep, notes for Google Keep. There's different types of platforms. Some are more desirable than others. You just have to look around, shop around, and see what's nice. Another cool thing would probably be Project Planner. The Project Planner allows you to plan projects. It gives you a certain amount of hours, days, weeks that you can plan everything. And it gives a lot of stuff. For example, project reports, task usage, resources. It's a very advanced piece of software. It gives you even reports on how you dedicate your time in PDF format, weekly reports, monthly reports. It gives you a lot of information. It gives a lot of expandability. So let's say we are going to have a project called YouTube channel. I'm the project leader. My client is YouTubers. Start date, end date, budget of $100. First day, holy day, clock time. We can see at what times we are going to work. Include days off. It just provides a lot of functionality. We can add a task. For example, let's say make a video. We can set certain days and certain percentage of completion. So this just makes large projects, for example, summatives, very useful. Resources, add resource, remove resource, how much time is spent, everything gets recorded in this program. Again, this is available on the Mac App Store. Another very nice app would probably be AntNotes. So AntNotes allows you to take several notes and they essentially appear on your desktop. Another thing would probably be Pixelmator. Pixelmator allows you to make very simple images. You can use posters. It's essentially Adobe Photoshop but cheaper. Again, I have a bit more in-depth video on my channel. But you can pretty much do anything you want. It's very easy to use. So we can see here we have a background. We get to choose the angle. We can add text here. Hello world. We can add, um, there's a lot of different effects, pinch, twirl, whatever. There's a different layering options. We can see here we have a nice grid effect in the background. So overall this program is very powerful for the amount of money that it costs. It's very quick and easy, quick to learn. I use this mostly for posters and channel artwork and whatever. So that's a very nice program. Another very nice thing would probably be Dropbox. Well this coincides with Google Drive. Essentially allows you to save files on the cloud there's very diff very many different options with various different advantages and disadvantages. So you can't really go wrong with either or. It just depends on the user. So lastly, I would probably say ScreenFlow would be nice. So ScreenFlow allows you to record your screen. You can also use QuickTime to record your screen. So if you ever have to record your screen or record your microphone, you can just type in QuickTime in um, Finder or whatever. 
and this will allow you to make a new movie recording, audio recording, or screen recording, or you can even record on your iPod. So that's a very cool thing. And that would be a new screen recording, and then you pick your device. So that's just another option for all of you out there. And as for other options, there's GitHub for you programmers out there, and Dr. Java for programmers. The specifics, such as more capable photo editing applications and color strokes, would be dependent on the actual person. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.